Hello everyone, this is Christian Kjofner from the Willow Project. To celebrate the release of the Willow Inference Server today, I thought I'd give a brief little demo of the WebRTC ASR interface for speech-to-text. Uh, first, we'll start with just uh, kind of a little overview of what we're looking at here. On the left, I have Chrome, you may have seen that before. And on the right, I have a console window open to the Willow Inference Server with debug output turned on so we can kind of get a better idea of what goes on behind the scenes and kind of makes this all possible. So with that, let's get going. Just uh, go to our hosted or self-hosted in your case, um, sort of demo URL here. And you can see that already we've, uh, we've completed um, ICE negotiation for a session establishment with you know, NAT, Pinhole, and all of those great things, and uh, also established a data channel that's bi-directional for start and stop of recording. Uh, as well as any results that come back from uh, from the Willow Inference server, um, let's uh, let's see what I can come up with in terms of uh, in terms of text to rattle off. This is a simple demo and debugging environment for the Willow Inference server WebRTC interface. WebRTC-based ASR is useful for real-time browser applications where resources are constrained. Audio is streamed to the server as the user speaks, so ASR can be performed quickly and accurately, leveraging state-of-the-art AI models. So you see that um, we are showing a response time of 994 milliseconds, which when we look at the output in the verbose log is, uh, is 18 times faster than real time because it took me approximately 17.7 seconds to, uh, to read that sample text. I think what's probably most interesting about this output is, uh, is this is actually using Whisper Large V2 with a beam size of five, which is the highest possible quality setting that's available with, uh, with the Whisper models. Um, you'll note that um, when using something like the Willow default of medium with beam size one, the inference time is significantly faster. And of course, that's all configurable on a, on a per request basis, depending on uh, the response times and interactivity required by your application. Uh, another thing to note is you'll see that uh, ASR infer time that's reflected here is, uh, is the ASR execution time on the Willow inference server side. Uh, that does not include the internet latency of the response over the data channel uh, for the ASR transcript. That number is reflected here. So total time between clicking the stop button and these results being displayed and rendered in the browser locally is 994 milliseconds. So, you know, I've got, well, what is that? Like 21 milliseconds uh, of, of latency for, for the return trip. Where, uh, where things get really kind of interesting and certainly fun for me is, um, is doing faster and faster speech segments and, uh, and watching that response time drop down. So for example, we could just do this all day. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other thing to, to note here is um, this was designed for long running uh, transcription sessions. So we're, we're doing some pretty interesting things from the WebRTC side uh, in terms of ICE negotiation, session establishment, and WebRTC track management. So once you load the page uh, or, or any page that's using our, our TypeScript client that we've also released and made available, we do the ICE session establishment, which is kind of you know fairly long, quote unquote, relatively speaking. Uh, you know, you notice when I loaded the page, it's it's actually pretty fast, um, and that's done one time. Uh, the you know the user is of course requested through uh, through WebRTC in the browser for access to uh, you know to microphone hardware to capture speech. Uh, once that takes place, we don't start the established negotiated uh, media track for the audio itself until the start button is clicked. And then once the start button um, changes to a stop button and stop is clicked, uh, we pause the track. What, what this serves to do is, uh, is actually minimize um, the kind of processing CPU and bandwidth requirements for idle sessions that aren't actively recording and capturing. Uh, last measured, I think that it ends up resulting in something like five to six kilobits per second um, for, for the kind of 
um, maintenance of the ice session and any established nat pinholes or, or, or those, those kinds of things. So uh, very lightweight, optimized for speed and responsiveness. And uh, in, in you know long running long running sessions, you can leave it running open for you know days or weeks or months at a time, however however long your internet connection and browser can stay up. Um, and uh, you know I guess maybe I'll just I'll just do um, you know do a couple more runs to to see what kind of response time and accuracy we get. The weather in Chicago is really nice today. I'm thinking about maybe going to Giordano's for lunch to have some pizza with my friends. Even got Giordano's. Look at that. Uh, no, uh, hopefully I'm not alienating anyone with that particular uh, Chicago pizza joint. But um, <laughs> probably kind of running out of gas in terms of things to come up with and say. So hopefully you found this as uh, you know as as interesting as I do and and uh, will continue to. And um, looking forward to hear what uh, what the community thinks um, in terms of feedback for the Willow Inference server. Thanks a lot. See you later.